patients in general? So melanoma was where most of the hard work has been done in this field, but now that we've learned how to use it in melanoma, we're absolutely able to take those lessons into other diseases, so in pancreatic, ovarian, colorectal cancer, we're seeing, and in lung cancer as well. Importantly, we're seeing amazing responses in patients treated with these drugs. His immune system, obviously our immune system is all very particular to us, but his immune system reacted well to this, even though he said he was very mm. ill at the start of the treatment. It's not going to work for everyone, is it? No, so for that particular drug, about one in five patients respond. But there are new drugs coming through where the response rate seems to be even higher, as much as 40% of patients are responding to new drugs. And it's not the same patients that are responding to the drug. So people who fail on ipilimumab, which is what Richard was treated with, are responding to pembrolizumab, which is another of these classes of agents. So it seems that we need to learn which patients to treat with which drugs, and that's, that's an important part, I think, of moving forward. How much does the treatment cost? So the treatment is, uh, Richard's treatment is 120,000 US dollars, so about 80,000 um, pounds. But of course, it's made much more expensive by the fact that only one in five patients will respond and so the, the trick now is to learn which patients will respond so that you can bring down the cost, the overall cost of, yeah. of the treatment. But in the long run perhaps is, is, is it more cost effective given the cost of other treatments he, he might have to have if he wasn't getting better? Well he's cured so yeah. he's now contributing back into the economy so absolutely of course you know it's not just the cost of the drug it's, it's his contribution now into, into the economy. What's the time scale you're looking at to, to or realistically to be able to bring that cost down and to bring the accuracy down? So yes it's the accuracy and the efficiency so Cancer Research UK is investing a lot of money into this at the Cancer Research UK Manchester Institute we're investing a lot in the basic biology of, of immunology as it's called and we're trying to to understand the nuts and bolts but also at the University of Manchester CRUK is funding research to try and combine these drugs with other treatments such as radiotherapy so that a far greater proportion of patients will, will actually work and then in Southampton CRUK is developing a whole new uh, class of drugs so-called uh, 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 vaccines for cancer and so I think the time scale it's we don't know but I wouldn't like to predict it however the first drug was, was approved in, in 2011. The second was approved in summer of this year, and on the 22nd of December, the third was approved. So within a very short period, we've gone from no drugs to three. So, Professor Richard, Ray, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Still to come on breakfast. Is there anybody here who wants to be an engineer when they grow up? Plugging the skills gap, we sent Steph out to find out why not enough young people are aiming for careers in science and engineering. Right now, let's get news, travel and weather where you are this morning. Good morning. A health worker suffering from Ebola is being flown from Glasgow to London for specialist medical attention. Shortly after half past three this morning, a convoy of ambulances and police escort vehicles left the Infectious Diseases Unit at Gart Naval Hospital to transport the woman to the airport. She's the first person to be diagnosed with Ebola while in the UK. She'd returned from Sierra Leone via Heathrow and arrived in Scotland late on Sunday night, apparently in good health. The woman had been working with the charity Save the Children just outside Freetown. Her condition is said to be stable. Efforts are being made to trace fellow passengers, but last night the First Minister stressed there was no need for alarm. Nicola Sturgeon said the authorities were well prepared for just such an eventuality. Scotland, it is important to say, has been preparing for this possibility from the beginning of the outbreak of Ebola in West Africa. Uh, I am confident that we are well prepared. We have very robust procedures in place to identify cases rapidly and also to ensure that any cases that are identified are then managed appropriately. And NHS 24 has set up an information phone line which can be used by anyone who has concerns. The number is 08000 858 531. Campaigners are calling on Scottish businesses to become accredited living wage employers in 2015. Nearly 100 organisations have already signed up for the scheme, which means all their staff will be paid at least £7.85 an hour. The Scottish Living Wage Accreditation Initiative is led by Poverty Alliance. Since November, it's added 32 new accredited employers, including Hearts Football Club and the Royal Bank of Scotland. 
Campaigners say in work poverty remains a real issue.